Good morning on this Sunday, November 6th. This is a special 28storms.com update regarding the Oklahoma earthquake and the potential threat of tornadoes across the same general area in addition to portions of Texas as we work our way into the day of Monday. First off, this was a 5.6 magnitude earthquake, which is fairly high considering that this area generally is not accustomed to witnessing such events. In fact, this was the strongest earthquake in Oklahoma's recorded history. It was a 5.6 magnitude, again, located just to the east of Oklahoma City. The one factor that did increase the damage potential for this particular earthquake was that it only occurred three miles below the surface, which makes this a fairly shallow earthquake. Some of the most significant damage, including chimneys falling through roofs, cracked walls, and buckled highways have been reported out of Lincoln County, and you can follow all of Lincoln County's emergency management status updates on their Facebook page. However, perhaps the more important thing to cover at the moment is the risk that lies ahead of us. This is the latest Storm Prediction Center forecast for Monday afternoon. They have much of central Oklahoma and central Texas outlined under a slight risk of severe weather. In addition, much of north central Texas and southwest Oklahoma are included within a hatched area, meaning that more in the way of significant severe weather is possible. The Storm Prediction Center forecast discussion is available to read by the public, and if you scroll down, one of the things that they mention is the threat of long-lived supercells and the possibility of a significant tornado along with several tornadoes with hail possibly exceeding two inches in diameter. The main culprit behind this severe weather setup is the mid to upper level disturbance currently pushing into the west coast of the United States. It's going to continue sliding toward the southeast and it's going to generate the development of a surface low over the Texas panhandle by Monday afternoon. One of the most reliable forecast models that meteorologists use is the GFS, and this is the Monday afternoon forecast. We can see that temperatures are going to be well into the 70s across much of Texas and southwest Oklahoma. And based on the wind vectors and pressure readings, it looks as though the forecast low is expected to make its way into western Oklahoma by this time. The second ingredient needed for severe weather is moisture, and sure enough, the dew points are forecast to climb well into the 60s across much of the outlined severe weather area. Of course, the atmosphere also needs to be unstable in order to generate severe storms, and one parameter that forecasters use to estimate the overall instability of the atmosphere is called the convective available potential energy. Sure enough, we have plenty of it here across portions of southwest Oklahoma and Texas. You also need quite a lot of vertical lift, and the GFS is showing values exceeding negative 4 to negative 6, which is more than adequate for severe thunderstorm initiation. And finally, in order to get tornadoes, you must not only have quite a lot of instability, but you also need vertical wind shear, and the surface to 500 millibar bulk shear values are exceeding 40 to 60 knots across Texas and Oklahoma, and it looks as though the best combination of shear and instability is setting up across north central Texas and southwest Oklahoma. In addition, the short range ensemble forecast model is indicating that the best potential for a strong tornado is between Sherman, Texas, Wichita Falls, and points just to the south and points just to the north up into Oklahoma and especially just to the south of Norman, Oklahoma. So this was just a brief update regarding the potential of severe weather on Monday and just a heads up for everyone that is overwhelmed by some of the earthquake coverage at the moment so just be alert of the upcoming threats as well and just keep it tuned to 28storms.com for more video updates and discussions and of course don't forget to check out the National Weather Service including the Storm Prediction Center for the latest official severe weather information.